We're uh, certainly pleased to have the opportunity to share a cup of coffee and some time this morning. Uh, so what we'd like to do is chat with you a little bit about some things that you may see or not see. So our remarks this morning are around this theme of hidden in plain sight. And uh, when we think about what's going on in retail and what Cotton Corporate's mission is, uh, it's always interesting to see things from different perspectives. And uh, when we first kind of go into a store and you see something like this, uh, what is it that you see? So take a look at this picture and take a sip of cup from your coffee and just kind of gaze around. What is it you see? What strikes you? Uh, how does this picture connect with you? What are you looking at? What are you looking for? Well, let's look at this picture. What do you see in this picture? Maybe there's an obvious answer. Maybe there's a not so obvious answer. Just take a look at that picture and think about what you're looking at, what you're seeing, and what you're thinking about. Well, let's go back to this one. And this is a, a retail store. And when Jen and I go into a place like this and our colleagues in the uh, global uh, supply chain marketing division go into a place like this, we're looking around too, just the same way you would. But we're thinking about the marketing challenge for cotton. So when we see a space like this, we're thinking about questions like what fibers are in this product or any of the products hanging on the rack here? Uh, where were these products made? Where are they coming from? We know that more than 95% of the clothing and apparel in the US is imported. Uh, so we're always thinking about where are the supply chains? Where are products coming from? And what are the trends in styles, prints, designs? That's important. We pay a lot of attention to that. We'll talk about that in a moment. But we're looking at those things too. And then even on a very technical level, uh, a marketing team and our, our expert researchers at Cotton Incorporated and product developers are always thinking about what type of treatments or mechanical finishing processes, the kinds of things that go into manufacturing the products you see at retail. And then from a marketing standpoint, we're thinking about big questions. Like, is this retailer or this store, are they marketing cotton? Or are they pushing some other kind of theme or marketing selling point? And for us in marketing, we're always thinking about who at this company or in this store or of this clothing brand, who decided which fiber to put into these products? Who made the decision to use cotton or some other fiber? We need to know that. And then our biggest strategic question anytime we see a store or, or a lineup like this is, how do we get cotton in these products? And if companies are using cotton, it's still a challenge for cotton. How do we keep cotton in these types of products? So these are some of the things that we see when we go uh, into uh, a market like this, into a store and look at product. And the Global Supply Chain Marketing Division is approximately 33 individuals at Cotton Incorporated who work cl quite closely with our experts in, in all the other divisions in the company. And our job is to quite simply get cotton into these types of products. I just showed you a clothing store, but we're active in a lot of things, including home textiles, whether it's sheets and towels, pillowcases, or even a broad category of products that we call non-wovens. Non-wovens are things like diapers. Diapers are made with fibers and different materials. There's a huge opportunity for cotton there. So when we're out and looking at what's going on, we're looking into opportunities for cotton, whether it's apparel, home textiles, or diapers and disposable wipes and other types of products that are all, in the end of the day, using fiber and we're thinking about how do we get cotton to be the fiber of choice in these types of products. So our division at Cotton Incorporated it has six departments and you can see them in these, these purple and lavender circles here. We work in non-wovens and with different market promotions and fashion marketing, 
And supply chain Asia, US, Mexico, Latin America, these are our effectively our sales teams that work with uh, hundreds of companies to see who's making the decision about using cotton or some other fiber. But in the end of the day, we work on all the things you don't see, but are necessary to bring cotton products to the market. So when you go in that store and you say, well, I see a rack of dresses or shirts, there's a whole lot more going on. There's a whole lot that is actually hidden in plain sight. And that's what we're gonna talk about this morning. So here's a picture. And I ask you, what do you see when you see this picture? Well, you may say, well, uh, that's typical in a men's store or a rack of shirts. And you know, you just select your size and it's, it's a variety of colors, you just choose. Well, there's a whole lot more to that. In fact, in our global supply chain marketing division, we have a department that's just set up to look at trend. And trend is absolutely important. Trend in color, trend in silhouette or style, trend in, in fabric. And we work closely with our product development group at Cotton Incorporated to think about the trends and what's going on in the market. A key point here is that these trends are usually identified 18 to 24 months before the product is even seen, as you see these shirts, on a shelf in a store. So we're working in sometimes two years or even more ahead of the selling season. So that's what we see when we see this rack of shirts. We see color, we see trend, we see ideas that were actually developed two years before you see these shirts on the rack. So it's color, it's fabric trend, it's consumer trends and market and lifestyle trends. It's bringing all of that together, looking at color and these other trends and thinking about where is the industry going? What are those trends? And then how can we connect that and give people choice in product that connects them to cotton options using cotton in these fabrics? Here's another picture. What do you see when you walk into a store and you see these types of products displayed on a rack? You may say, well, yeah, I, I need one of those pullover tops. I need one of those fleece tops. So, oh, I like that color. Well, we see something extremely different. From our eyes in global supply chain marketing, we see opportunity. And that opportunity is built around the fact that most of these fleece products are made with synthetic fibers. And we know from our science and the work done by our sustainability division and our researchers at Cotton Incorporated that these synthetic fibers are actually quite slow to biodegrade. That means dissolving away in the environment, whether that's in the soil or in water. And what we see is that cotton actually makes great products, but when that product life is over, cotton fibers can actually biodegrade in the environment particularly in water environments, at a much, much more significant rate than synthetic and artificial fibers like polyester and nylon. And that's actually an advantage for us when we're marketing to retailers, brands, and consumers who are seeking sustainable and eco-friendly types of materials. So this type of science is what we see when we see that rack of pullovers on the shelf. So let me turn it over to Jen to talk about some other things that might be hidden in plain sight. Thanks, Mark. So as we see here, you know, when you're in a store and you're choosing product, you know, very obviously here, this consumer is holding up a shirt, maybe a pair of pants. Um, but in the background, here's what's really going on behind these apparel pieces. Um, we work with a diverse group of brands and retailers worldwide, extensively in the US and Canada to make these connections between the product and the end use. Um, often we've got multiple product lines within the private label business of companies. So it's a company within a company. There's a lot of complexity there. And within these companies inside of companies, it's a variety of product. So we could be working on at any given time, outerwear, jeans, dress shirts, workwear, sleepwear, activewear, 
And that's just talking about the apparel side of the business. Um, we also work in home textiles. There's a lot of opportunity there. Um, obviously within sheets, towels, and blankets, most people kind of connect that very easily with cotton, but we're also realizing that there's a lot of opportunity within upholstery as well. So we're very well versed in a variety of products on any given day. And in the ways that we meet with these brands and retailers, um, it's always a little bit unique. It's always a little bit different. So sometimes it's at a trade show. Sometimes we're traveling to their office. Sometimes they're coming to our office. Um, sometimes it could be an industry event. Um, but when we do this travel, we're traveling in and around some 20 countries around the world. So it's this constant forward motion of connecting with these companies, again, in just a variety of ways. Um, it's just not a cookie cutter approach. So when I take a look at this, I, I see a, a very nice men's sweatshirt, right? It's got a little logo on the chest. Um, this is something that we worked extensively on. So what's hidden in plain sight? Well, let's flip it around. This is the Duluth Alaskan Hard Gear sweatshirt, right? We're all probably familiar with Duluth. Um, the initial conversation to bring this sweatshirt to market began at a trade show. It began at the outdoor retailer trade show in June of 2017. That is when our team first discussed with Duluth the opportunity for them with the tough cotton technology. That conversation continued into 2019. It was revisited. Um, swatches were looked at, different opportunities, how to market tough cotton. Tough cotton is um, an abrasion resistant technology, makes your product more durable. Duluth being a workwear company, this was really um, an ideal technology for them to connect with. So as this conversation evolved, um, several different fabrics were developed. Um, two different companies in Asia created samples for the Duluth product development and design team to look at. And our staff in Asia worked extensively on the technical samples and the production trials. So it, it really is a truly collaborative effort to make sure that everybody is communicating from Asia to Duluth's product development design team to our account managers to make sure that all of the questions behind this product are answered. Duluth did license the Cotton Incorporated Tough Cotton Technology name, and that is the name that it went to market with. And the product launch was in fall of 2020. So when you look at the extensive conversations emails, phone calls, meetings, one-on-one, -on -one. all of that happened over a very long period of time, 2017 to 2019. So when you go to the Duluth website, this is what you see. You see the cross hall cotton crew neck sweatshirt in a variety of colors and sizes. Um, but all of that that I just discussed is what went into this product before it ever made it to market. Now here, this is a very different scenario. Um, here we see a very cute pair of girls' leggings, right? They're colorful, they have a fun pattern on them. But behind that, you see that these are from Land's End. These are the girls' leggings. Again, it's tough cotton technology. Um, this was different in the case that uh, this was really what we call a speed to market kind of initiative. Um, we first started discussing this with Land's End in January of 2020 with a proposed launch of May 2020. So obviously very, very short time period. And this was really done to be remain competitive within the market. 
So the product development and trial work went through fairly quickly. The uh, U.S. supply chain marketing team spent months helping Lance and craft compelling marketing points. And this is also another piece that we work on um, is really kind of bringing and honing those talking points from product into hang tags. It could be to the website. It could be to the catalog. But making sure that um, the marketing team at Land's End understands why product development and design embraced this technology on the lighting. Within all of those conversations, we also loop in our legal department. Our legal department will work with the legal department at Land's End to make sure that all contract agreements are signed um, and understood. So it, again, it's a collaborative effort. It's our team, it's product development, it's design, it's our counterparts in Asia, uh, and also our legal team here in North Carolina. So when you go to the Land's End website, this is what you see. You see this great girls tough cotton legging, comes in a variety of colors, patterns, sizes. Um, but again, there's an extensive conversation that is ongoing prior to this ever being um, brought to the consumer level. Here we have a boy's pair of twill pants, right? Nice cotton twill classic boy's pants. But let's look and see what went into this development. So this is the Ralph Lawrence boy's flex abrasion twill pants. Flex abrasion, that's pure press. So our pure press technology was adopted by the Ralph Lauren team. Um, and they opted in this boys product to call out the durability aspect rather than the ease of care, wash and wear that we typically associate with pure press. And pure press technology is a um, environmentally friendly, lower chemistry point for this kind of ease of care uh, product. Also within that, it, it provides excellent durability. So the development of this actually began when after the Ralph Lawrence team launched the Pure Press Technology Men's Dress Shirt in fall of 2020. And they were so excited to launch the Pure Press. Pure Press calling out the ease of care for the men's dress shirt kind of a no-brainer, uh, but then they kind of worked with us to flip the script a little bit and call out the abrasion for the boys' twill pant, knowing that maybe abrasion resistant is a little bit more appealing in this particular um, product. So trial work began on the boys' pant program very quickly to ensure that the hand fill, product durability, and the ease of care all executed very, very well. And our team worked very, very closely with the team at Ralph Lauren to create targeted messaging that called out the durability of the product on the hang tag and any other marketing points they may be using. So when you go to the Ralph Lauren website, this is what you see. Uh, again, variety of color, sizes, um, great picture of the product. When you go to that product description, um, even though the name of the pant is the flex abrasion twill pant, you will actually see that it is calling out the pure press technology in that product description. So that does kind of, you know, adhere to um, a marketing point and also a technology point. And I will hand it back to Mark. So I hope you're getting an appreciation for some of the things that we kind of see every day in the market, apparel items in particular, but what's hidden behind them. And as Jen just showed us, there's a whole lot of work, sometimes taking months and even years before a product comes to market. But that's what it takes to get cotton into these products and to move pounds and bales of cotton. So when we see something like those slacks, or denim jeans in the marketplace. Remember, every bale is approximately 220 pairs of jeans. So anytime we can create these types of product programs, we're moving pounds and bales of cotton. And that's the goal, get cotton in there, 
replace the synthetics or in markets where we have the lead and there's a lot of cotton used, we want to preserve that share of market. But what's also interesting when we think about what's hidden in plain sight is what, what the average consumer does. And here you see an example of a, of a lady shopping. And this is typical of what most consumers will do. They'll, they'll touch the fabric and they'll look at the style, they'll look at the color. But what's really key here is what her hand is doing. She's touching the fabric. But what we really want to do is make sure consumers not only touch it to make sure it's soft and comfortable, but we want them to actually look inside and check the label. And that's what a lot of our, our consumer advertising is aimed at, is getting that awareness to check the label. And we have a terrific market research department at Cotton Incorporated. And we do a lot of work to find out how many consumers are actually checking these labels. That's a good proxy or a good indicator for us of whether or not fiber content is important. If you don't look for the label, it doesn't matter to you, then fiber content may not be important. If your product doesn't perform or comes apart in the wash or gets a lot of little pills or little uh, 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 deformation in the fabric, then you might start paying attention to what it's made of. But we want to be proactive and get consumers to look for cotton and buy and search for the cotton products. So what we find and what our market research group at Cotton Incorporated has found is that in the US market, 43% uh, of consumers will always or usually check the label. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We'd like to see it higher, but that's a pretty good number. But there are differences when you look a little further. So let's look at how men and women shop. And I think we would all agree there are differences by gender. We see men typically being a little more brand loyal. Uh, uh, female shoppers tend to be more willing to look at different brands, more fashion styles. But whether they're shopping in different ways, ultimately we wanna make sure men and women are checking a label. And here we see a little higher propensity of men to check the label. Another way we can look at this is by age. And when you think about our, our marketing program, certainly at the consumer level, but also when we're talking to companies about marketing something like boys' pants or girls' leggings, it's important to know what the products are made of. And we see that consumers here at certain age levels have different awareness. What this statistic tells us is that while younger consumers, teens and 20s primarily, may not be checking that label as much, certainly the mothers and the dads who are buying product are more likely to check that. So when Jen talked about crafting marketing messages and working with brands and retailers, this is the kind of information and the kind of market insight that goes into helping our marketing teams develop the right kind of marketing strategies and call outs and promotions that can feature cotton and really resonate with what consumers are looking for. I want to give you one other example of something hidden in plain sight. And imagine you're driving down the road and you're, let's say, driving through Alabama, uh, where I took this picture, and you see a field like this. All of us are in the business, and, and we look at this field very differently from, let's say, someone who works for a retailer or a brand. They've never been to a cotton farm. And they might be driving to spring break or summer vacation uh, or over crop circles in Texas or another place. And, and they don't really know what they're looking at. They see something, but they're not sure, okay? So when we see a field like this, uh, we see some things that are quite different. And when I see a cotton field like this, uh, I see a lot of things that are actually hidden in plain sight things that are obvious to me because of uh, our experience in the industry, but maybe not so obvious to that brand or retailer who might just be driving by a cotton field or other uh, agricultural field. So what do I see? In a US cotton field, I see the most responsibly grown cotton in the world. That's what I see when I look at a field like this anywhere in the US. It also makes me think about the leadership that we have among growers, among industry organizations in the US, uh, 
experts at Cotton Incorporated as well, leaders in research and science and continual improvement. That's what I see when I look at this field. And it's absolutely critical that what all of you and, and our team at Cotton Incorporated see and know is going behind, going on behind simply a beautiful cotton field. It's absolutely critical that we have the ability to tell that story to basically take what is hidden in plain sight. Okay? If you're in the business and you're a brand or retailer, you walk into the store, you see it differently than a consumer just walking there to buy a shirt or a pair of boys slacks. It's the same thing with a cotton field. And essential to the marketing that we do with brands and retailers, essential to that is taking what is hidden in plain sight, like all the work that's done to create cotton and responsibly produce it, and to convey that and tell that story to these brands and retailers so that they have the confidence in using cotton in their products. I cannot uh, overstate how important that is to our marketing ability to get cotton into these types of products. So when the industry uh, is taking initiatives like the Cotton Trust Protocol, it's an effort to tell that story. It's an effort for our growers to take the great effort they're making and find ways through initiatives like that to help tell this story. All of that contributes to our ability to get cotton in these products. So we wanna thank you for your time this morning and for sharing a little bit of that time and a cup of coffee with us as we've hopefully given you a different perspective on what you see both at retail and what's important that goes on behind the scenes, whether that's the research at Cotton Incorporated, our work in sustainability, our product development, our global marketing efforts, or even the importance of what happens right at the farm and the importance of our ability to tell that story so that we can continue to be successful at getting cotton into these types of products. So thank you for your attention. Let me turn it back over to our colleagues at the Cotton Board, and we'd be glad to chat with you.